What's up, guys? Today, we're going to P. Diddy's Homeby Hills Mansion. I'm going to break in, and I'm going to put a, <laughs> put a camera on the face of everybody there. All right. Let's talk about Sean P. Diddy Holmes. Yesterday, while we were on our way to the animal sanctuary, the reptile zoo, Sean P. Diddy Combs' homes were raided both in Star Island in Florida, in Miami, and also in the Homeby Hills neighborhood, which is the most, one of the most expensive real estate neighborhoods in the state of California, in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, his homes were raided. His sons were in the Homeby Hills home. They were, like, handcuffed and stuff. It was crazy. This is, of course, coming on the heels of a sex trafficking investigation into Sean PDD Combs. And uh, we are going to, his sons were just handcuffed. I, I don't think they were arrested, but like, that's normal. They were, you know, he was not there. He was not at his houses. Apparently, some of the people were tracking his private jet, which may or may not have landed outside of the uh, U.S. borders. There are some photos that came out of him. Potentially. Pacing around nervously at the Miami private jet terminal. Right before he allegedly, possibly fled the country and went to Antigua. Let's take a look at the story. News now. tonight, we have some new details about why federal agents may have raided mansions belonging to musician and producer Sean Diddy Combs. CNN's Carlos Suarez is outside of his Miami home for us. So what more do you know about what's behind these searches? Well, Anderson, a law enforcement uh, tells my colleague, a law enforcement source rather, tells my colleague, uh, Josh Campbell, that uh, these uh, search warrant activities at both of Combs' homes are related to an ongoing sex trafficking investigation. Yeah. However, I know. the source would not say not. whether Combs is the target of this investigation. We can, we, we have, um, we have some time for sure. We, I, I can go for, I can go for probably another hour, I think. But at the top of the hour, there I will be serving a three-minute ad break right now. Um, of course, if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe chatters for $5 or free with the Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account where you get one free Prime subscription a month. Use it on your favorite broadcaster. Hopefully, that's me. Here is the three-minute ad break now. Okay. Um, Watch the bridge analysis vid first. No, we're we're moving on from the bridge story. I already covered it extensively up and down. Okay. We're talking about Diddy now. Citing the sensitivity of the investigation itself. Now agents with Homeland Security raided two homes belonging to Combs, one here in Miami Beach, the other in Los Angeles. The property here in Miami Beach is an 11,000 square foot property. And uh, late tonight, we saw agents walking out of this house carrying a cardboard box as well as several bags from the second story of the property out here. Now, agents in Los Angeles could be seen walking around Combs's house there. They were processing the scene there and could be seen uh, taking notes on a table there. Now, an official with Homeland uh, Security here in Miami tells me that uh, the raid that took place here happened a little bit after three o'clock this afternoon. And a neighbor tells me that about 30 to 40 law enforcement officers uh, showed up to the house out here and carried out this search warrant. Uh, again, Anderson, late word tonight uh, from a law enforcement source who tells my colleague uh, Josh Campbell that these uh, search warrants uh, that were executed is in connection with a sex trafficking investigation. However, the source would not say whether Combs himself is the target of the investigation. And, and has Anderson, Sean Combs commented on the searches? Yeah, so we have reached out to... <laughs> who could it be? It must be a coincidence that they just happened to raid both of his... They just it, It's a real strange coincidence they happened to raid both of his homes. You know what I mean? It's just... They're, they're looking for another guy, guys. Okay, listen, make no mistake. The fact that he's not there and we don't know where the fuck he is also... Also shouldn't 
be confusing or uh, lead to any additional speculation. Who knows, you know? Hey, Sean, come back. We're looking for another guy. Yeah. To Wait, what? It wouldn't be a sex trafficking story without the British royals involved in some way? Court paper names Duke of Sussex as an example of a well-known figure whom the defendants might have had access to. Are you fucking joking? Prince Harry named the Sean Diddy Combs sexual assault lawsuit? Dude! Bro! 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 What the fuck, bro? Bro! How? 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 What? Oh my god. It's like the royals find themselves mentioned. I mean, in, in some capacity. I'm sure it's, it's not like a Prince Andrew situation. I'm sure it's not like that. <laughs> There's an interview where P. Diddy said Harry and Meghan were never at any parties. Uh, of Combs. However, we have not heard back. Again, all of this played out uh, here at around 3 o'clock this afternoon. Almost it's clickbait. They're just saying he had clout because he knew him. Oh, that's Immediately, it. we were trying to get some details on exactly uh, what was taking place not only here in Miami and Los Angeles, but as of this late hour, we have not heard from any of Combs's representatives about the raids at either of his properties or the investigation itself. All right, Carlos Suarez, appreciate it. Join me now, CNN legal analyst and criminal defense attorney Joey Jackson and the aforementioned Josh Campbell. So Josh, you were part of searches like this when you were an FBI agent. What, what do you read into the, I mean, what stands out to you about this? Well, this is all becoming a little clearer, Anderson. You know, from the moment that we first saw those SWAT vehicles roll up uh, to those homes, as well as mobile command posts, all of those vehicles emblazoned with the letters HSI, uh, that was an indication for those in law enforcement that we're likely talking about sex trafficking because HSI itself is uh, the primary investigative arm of the Department of Homeland Security. They deal with transnational criminal groups, but they also have a robust under, uh, effort underway to go after human traffickers. That involves two prongs, not only to rescue victims of human tra trafficking, but also to locate and prosecute those who may be behind the trafficking itself. And again, you know, a source now tells me this is part of an ongoing <laughs> trafficking investigation. Uh, we don't yet know what specifically they were looking for at these residences. We did see on the aerial footage uh, dozens of law enforcement agents that were descending on both of those locations. And so we'll have to wait and see what the search warrant itself actually entailed. But again, this comes after uh, Sean Combs has faced a, a series of legal troubles in the past several months uh, to include one accuser, for example, back in December. This was a, a, a woman who was uh, 17 years old at the time that she alleged in 2003 that she was sexually assaulted by Combs, saying that uh, she was sex trafficked, that uh, she was subject to gang rape. Of course, Combs himself had denied all of that. And then finally, uh, just last month, a former employee of Combs had alleged uh, in a civil lawsuit uh, that he was forced to uh, work for Combs, forced him to procure and interact with sex workers. And uh, this uh, individual also saying that Sean Combs' son, Justin, was accused of soliciting prostitutes and underage girls to attend uh, various parties and functions. Again, what? the Combs have denied all of that, but all of this now coming in into focus about what the likely uh, key primary target here is of federal law enforcement. And that's determined whether uh, the, the extent of any sex traffic that may have occurred in these residences and who may. There is already many YouTube documentary on Diddy. Yeah, bro. Okay. It's a little bit different uh, when we're talking about like an active Department of Homeland Security investigation into international sex trafficking potentially. Okay. Versus a YouTube documentary from some guy who's like, look at P. Diddy being weird around Justin Bieber. Like, I know that, I know that P. Diddy is like, like a lot of people have talked about P Diddy, but like this goes a little bit beyond the the T accounts. You know what I mean? And what I mean by that is like the T accounts might have been correct and might have been there ahead of time before anybody else. But like in many instances, they just also, you know, stack it up with a whole bunch of like weird shit, uh, and and weird, and it's always like almost always like reactionary in nature in the way that they fucking talk about, um. Like, why these things are happening. Oh, it's the Illuminati. Like, PDD's a part of the Illuminati. And he's doing, like, humiliation rituals. Yada, yada, yada. And he's, like, gay. And it's always, almost always homophobic, too. Maybe responsible. So, Joey, Joey, just from a legal standpoint, would Sean Combs' attorneys at this hour now be 
informed about what exactly they were looking for? Not necessarily. I mean, at some point, certainly you're going to want to, if you're the lawyers, assess, do you have a warrant? Is it valid? What specific information underlies that warrant? Where was the probable cause with respect to, to any type of criminality found, right? Who were the sources of that information? At some point, you'll have all of this. Remember that this is still an active and ongoing investigation. As part of discovery, if this does get into something criminal, I would have to presume the U.S. Attorney's Office is involved. We should point out no right? criminal charges have been filed. Not at all, right? This is simply an investigatory step, and at this stage of the investigation, they apparently went to a judge, right, Anderson, and said, look, we have reason to believe that indicia of criminality may lie within these residences. So they show up with a search warrant at these houses, Correct. and whoever's there has to let them in. Correct. I mean, it's a val if it's a valid warrant, it's presumably you have all these law enforcement officials there, you let them in, they search for what they search for, and then there's the other step. That other step being what specifically did you find? What, if any, connection is that to any criminality? You give it to prosecutors and it's taken from there. And are they told what was taken from the house? Yes, there will be a specific list of items that will ultimately... Is it weird that the DHS is doing these raids instead of the FBI? Yes. It's not weird that the DHS is doing these instead of the FBI. It just signals, like, what the scope of the investigation is. Um... Department of Homeland Security doing it means that it's uh, there's a likelihood that it is like human trafficking or sex trafficking of an international variety. FBI usually does that as well. They they engage in human uh, trafficking uh, cases, but uh, uh, I think like I think they they will do a collaborative one. But FBI is like if it was almost internally, like if it was like domestic, right? FBI can work on uh, international cases as well. They also do human trafficking and all the other stuff. But I think that uh, the DHS participating in the raid, or not the yeah Homeland Security participating in the raid, means that there's an international component. Probably, I think FBI is interstate. If it just stays interstate, then I don't know if it would be like uh, it would be Homeland Security, maybe. Homeland Security suggests a massive international criminal enterprise. I mean, I think so, but maybe not. I don't know. You don't know what you're set. You don't know what you're talking about and end up saying, I think. Yes. <clears throat> that is what I'm re saying. Yes, I am like literally that's how human language works. Like it, it, we don't know the details. What the fuck do you mean? I'm openly admitting that I do not know the details, which is why I am saying I think it could be this. You are repeating that I am speculating and saying you're speculating on this issue. It's like, yeah, dumbass, I am. What do you want me to do? They're used to their favorite debate pedophile confidently stating incorrect things as fact. Expect that instead. I just, I don't get it. Like, I'm openly admitting that I do not know. I do not have all of the details. I do not have all of the details of this situation. I cannot predict the fucking future. So I am speculating and I'm recognizing that I'm speculating. So when I say my understanding is, or what I think is going on, um, you know, I'm, I, that comes with the admission that, like, I don't know. It's very odd to, you know, yell at me for not being confidently incorrect and instead being unconfident and recognizing my limitations. <laughs> I've been only hanging out here since October, but the amount of brain dead you have in the chat is amazing. YouTube perv is mad right now. Yeah, I don't know. Ultimately be turned over to attorneys if, if it goes that far, which will delineate specifically what we took, what room we took it from, who was the agent or agents who, who secured that information. And then it'll go a step further because there'll be analysis on what items that were taken and what, if anything, in that analysis in a laboratory showed that it was connected to any type of sex trafficking, if any, right? And from there, there'll be or there won't be a criminal prosecution.
Joshua, I mean, when people hear the term sex trafficking, what comes to mind is moving people across borders. I mean, that's, I assume that's not what's involved here. If that, yeah, you know, fact, it's unclear. Any of that went on. Yeah, it's unclear about the extent, you know, how, how global this we're, we're talking about. Obviously, with human trafficking, that can be transnational in nature where people are uh, brought in uh, from overseas. Whoa, 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 whoa. Listen up, big guy. I can't believe you're you're mentioning that like a sex trafficking could be international. Excuse me. Seems like these guys at CNN are doing some really fucked up shit, dude. Why would you say such a crazy thing? But sex trafficking happens all across the United States here domestically uh, from people who are from the United States, particularly young victims uh, who are subjected to, uh, you know, such depravity uh, by individuals. And that's, this is why you have agencies like H HSI primarily uh, leading the effort to try to rescue those vic victims in order to hold accountable anyone who uh, may be responsible. But it's something that, you know, it d doesn't get a lot of attention, uh, particularly because a lot of these investigations happen behind the scenes. There's another element uh, where oftentimes investigators will try to protect the privacy of victims, obviously for good reason, uh, but it certainly is a very sinister threat that, that uh, HSI continues to investigate coast to coast. We should point out there have been a number of civil lawsuits, I guess, against uh, Sean Combs. Again, no criminal charges, it's really important to point out, have been filed. This was, this was uh, you know, uh, executing two search warrants. Um, is it, Joey, I mean, is it common for, if, if, civil, if there are civil cases, that that would trigger a... Department of Homeland Security investigation? Not necessarily and not at all. However, if you have civil complaints, right, civil lawsuits relating simply to that, right, the securing of compensation based upon some sexual misconduct that's alleged, that's a civil in nature. In this particular case, apparently authorities evaluated that, and from that, they certainly would have had access to the witnesses underlying those allegations, could have interviewed those witnesses, and could have determined that based upon the civil allegations, there could be criminality that may very well well have led to the probable cause, which led to these warrants, which is leading to this criminal investigation. Joe Jackson, thanks very much. Josh Campbell as well. Thank you. Let me tell you that shares in Donald Trump's social media. Yeah, I mean, there's more to the P. Diddy stuff, I think, uh, beyond this, but I was on the jury for a sex trafficking case worked by DHS. Those guys don't fuck around. They're fucking ruthless. Yeah, this is like, guys, this is the one thing that they are supposed to do or anyone in the federal law enforcement agencies are supposed to do and do right, okay? I don't think anyone, no matter what their framework is, no matter what their ideological framework is, is going to go ahead and say something like, no, they shouldn't actively search for international sex traffickers or sex traffickers that are doing it domestically and, and pedophiles, you know what I mean? This is like the thing. This is the thing that they do, and they do well, and they're supposed to do more of. Um, sometimes it's bastardized, and they utilize these, um, these resources to go after, like, consensual adult sex work, which is not criminal or not supposed to be criminal. But, like, beyond that, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't have to be the Department of Homeland Security doing this. But, like, some agency is supposed to. Uh, here is Brian Enton, statement from Sean P. Diddy Combs' lawyer. Statement on behalf of Sean Combs. Yesterday, there was a gross overuse of military-level forces. Search warrants were executed at Mr. Combs' residences. There is no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by the authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. Mr. Combs was never detained but spoke to and cooperated with the authorities. Despite media speculation, neither Mr. Combs nor any of his family members have been arrested nor has their ability to travel have been restricted in any way. This unprecedented ambush, paired with an advanced coordinated media presence, leads to a premature rush to judgment of Mr. Combs and is nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in a civil lawsuit. There has been no findings of criminal or civil liability with any of these allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name, says Aaron Dwyer, Diddy's attorney. Now, the thing is, Given how the Department of Homeland Security moves, okay, it I don't think it's meritless. Like I I as much as I shit on the federal agencies on a regular basis, 
as much as I criticize them, <laughs> as much as I criticize them, um, they must have meritless lawsuit that he settled in like a week. Yeah, they must have ultimately seen enough information from the civil litigation, if you recall, that was launched uh, against Diddy like a couple months back that he tried to settle as quietly as he possibly could, which is impossible when you're fucking P. Diddy, um, that must have uh, triggered law enforcement to at least get search warrants, which, again, not meritless, can't be meritless, because, like, especially in a situation this high profile with a very wealthy person, uh, you're, like... The judges are going to look at the evidence presented to offer search warrants, right? This isn't like fucking FISA court. This is not happening behind closed doors and, and you know, judges are like just signing off in, uh, in, in, a, in another circumstance where they easily would offer search warrants to local police uh, on an active investigation, like in the Breonna Taylor situation, for example, right? For like a no-knock warrant. Like, this is a high-profile person, and these are federal law enforcement agencies, which means that the, the standard for evidence is probably going to be pretty fucking high. It's similar to the Trump case in some respects, where like, remember when they raided Mar-a-Lago? And everyone was like, whoa, what the fuck? Like, this is meritless. Like, no, I don't think no matter how political the law enforcement agencies might be in this circumstance, like the federal agencies will be in this circumstance, there is there has to be a pretty fucking high bar of evidence to clear for them to have enough for them to at least justify being able to raid his residences to find additional evidence. Like, it's just, they don't, they don't just like sign off on it for bullshit is what I mean. It's a lot of resources being used as you're, you're right, uh, chatter that said that's a lot of used resources, not just for bullshit, even though cops do fucking use a lot of resources. Like they swat randomly and, and often, and it's bad and it's wrong. And I mean, it's illegal for a reason, but like it still happens. But like my point is, um, there must have been enough in the civil litigation that caused them to go to a federal judge and ask for a search warrant. P. Diddy also simultaneously, I think, like sold to uh, an anonymous person, like his company recently. Is that, I saw that uh, news as well. Someone in the chat is saying it too, but like, Let's see. I mean, I, I've only seen it in like blogs and shit. I have not seen it in, um, I have not seen it anywhere else. Uh, so I don't know if it's like correct or not, but let me see. <laughs> like this is from vibe.com, which is respectable. Uh, Diddy sells remaining Revolt TV stake to anonymous buyer. Yeah, it's on Billboard as well. It's like, it, it, these aren't blogs. These are like respectable outlets. Um, according to TMZ, and again, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think TMZ is also a respectable outlet when it comes to breaking this sort of stuff. Um, at least more respectable than like fucking blogs in general. Uh, according to TMZ, his shares were sold for an undisclosed sum though it will remain black owned. The outlet also details that the new revolt boss wants to remain anonymous during this time. However, they plan to announce their arrival in the coming weeks. No other details surrounding the sales have been shared. They are respectable, but shameless in some ways you kind of need that in journalism. Honestly, like, like they do sleaze, they do sleaze ball shit too. Like, sometimes they do it in, in a way where it's like you're violating their privacy. You're doing it in a way where it's like it's gross. It's, it's dehumanizing. But in other instances, it's like someone's got to do it. You know what I mean? It's one of those things where I always have this arm's length 
with TMZ journalism where I'm like, on the one hand, I'm like, sometimes it's really fucking sleazy, but in other times I'm glad that there is a guy out there that is doing it. You know what I mean? This is one of those moments where I'm like, I'm glad that there's a fucking sleazeball that is like actually doing investigative reporting on this kind of shit. Does that make sense? But having said that, I do... It is weird to admit this, but I do think that TMZ has a relatively decent track record uh, as far as like being the first. Uh, as far as being the first, TMZ deletes stuff if they get it wrong. Wait, really? I don't. I, I'm sure maybe they. I'm, I'm sure they've gotten shit wrong. It's impossible to always get it right. Tyler Oliveira is on his way there as we speak. Yeah. I investigated P. Diddy's fuck compound. <laughs> What's up, guys? Today, we're going to P. Diddy's Homeby Hills mansion. I'm going to break in, and I'm going to put a, <laughs> put a camera on the face of everybody there. The most, with the most racist thumbnail you've ever seen? Yeah. You're going to go down to your local and slam XXXX with the boys. I will be having my first VB long neck on camera. I almost had it last night and I was like, you know what? I want to film this. I was up early this morning with an international discussion about the federal raid on Sean P. D. Combs' property uh, in, in the Southern Cuneth. California area. And she's on with us now on Toronto Today. Megan, thanks for the time. Properties in Los Angeles and Miami. Why is it only audio? Turning Damn, I'll do the BBC two one. Properties in Los Angeles and Miami connected to rapper Sean Combs, also known as P. Diddy. I got a P again. The I've been on slamming by the Department bruise. of Homeland Security. Officials have not specified the reason for the raid. However, there have been also many lawsuits that have accused Mr. Combs of sexual misconduct. His attorneys have previously denied all of the allegations made against him. Ali, I spoke to Megan Cuniff, a legal affairs journalist in the Los Angeles area. I started by asking her to outline what we know so far about those raids. Federal authorities with uh, Homeland Security have executed search warrants at locations in Los Angeles and Miami that are associated with uh, Sean Combs, Diddy, the music mogul, business mogul that got his start as Puff Daddy in the music world. This comes amid uh, heightened uh, attention to Diddy because of lawsuits that have been filed against him about uh, sex, sexual assault allegations, sex trafficking allegations, some really serious allegations that be began back in November with a, a lawsuit that grabbed a lot of attention from his former girlfriend, Cassie, who's a well-known R&B singer. She uh, enlisted a well-known firm, law firm in New York City, and they unveiled a, a serious lawsuit against Diddy that outlined all sorts of abuse that had happened over a number of years. And there were some sex trafficking allegations in there. And there have been subsequent lawsuits, uh, similar lawsuits filed since then. And the question has always been, uh, is, is he facing possible criminal charges? 50 Cent is the true goat. Everybody's ever beefed either turned out to be a pedo or a Nazi. He's also producing and funding a documentary on the diddler. He's his DK. I'm going to expose you right now. Why are you first testing out your statements in the Discord chat and then coming into the Twitch chat and blasting it off again in the Twitch chat? Why are you A-B testing why are you A-B testing your chat? Your chats. I actually do respect it. I do respect it. We all do that? No, I know. I look at the Discord more. I've been looking at the Discord more. And I see you motherfuckers say the same shit in the Discord chat. And then hop on. It's no different than you A-B testing jokes with us before tweeting. True. Fair. It's like, damn, people are, people are reacting to this one. This got a lot of fucking, a lot of keg W's in the discord. Time to fucking put this in the chat. Time to put this on the map right now. Maybe the streamer will like pull me out. Two different audiences.
Yeah, just workshopping it. It's a solid way to get uh, bangers out onto the stream. I respect it. Can you do this on stream? Yeah, I'm going to do this on stream. If you Neck in a VB long neck. On Bambi and Hoscourt House, I miss the memes. I know, I know. Um, I want to, I want to clean up. I want to clean up Hoscourt a little bit. I feel like Hoscourt is, is in many respects, uh, for all of its faults and failures, the heart of the community. And I feel like Hoscourt needs to have more chill with like normies that go in there and, and stop being so goddamn clicky and stop being so fucking annoyingly political. And, you know, uh, it's just. It is basically like nuking it or napalming it to clean, cleaning it, uh, the hoss court a little bit. I found your merch while thrifting, thrift shopping today. Yeah, I saw. I think, did you post it on the Hassan Piker uh, subreddit? Offline chat is the heart. Offline chat is literally just hoss court that. Uh, thought Hoscord was too clicky and and uh, and annoying, and then they made their own little click. Offline chat is a Splinter Discord, yeah, but they're not like a problematic Splinter Discord. They're not like an annoying, at least now. They're not an, uh, until now, <laughs> but they're also clicky as fuck. Let's be real. What about Hoscord two? Better Hoscord with crack? I didn't even know. I don't even know. The person who yelled at earlier in Discord was an offliner, Lamau. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like, it's like dudes who feel like they have more ownership over the community than anybody else, and it does get annoying. And you guys gotta. I want it. I want there to be like one community and not splinters. I've seen offline chat tell you to not go online yet because they want to play more trivia. Yeah, they're fucking memeing. They're not being serious. Anyway, let's finish uh, Megan's uh, take here. Wait, actually, I kind of want to see. Uh, show up at Diddy's house and say, hey, would you mind if we search the place? They had legal authority to go in there and to get that, especially in federal court, the standard is very high for them to uh, get a search warrant signed by a, a magistrate judge in the Southern District of New York saying, you know, yes, there is reason, lawful reason for you to go onto these private properties and seize these materials. Of course, it being a federal process, we don't have access to that search warrant. I was thinking back to when I worked in Spokane, Washington, and we could just go down to the county courthouse and ask to see the search warrants. It, it doesn't work like that in federal court, but they must have some pretty lengthy affidavit that they've written for a judge supporting this search. And of course, that's where all the details on what's going on here. I mean, who prompted this? What are they looking at? And then really who? Who are the individuals here? Who, who are the possible victims that we're looking at here? Yeah, you know, Megan, um, all along, Diddy has maintained his innocence and denied all of these allegations. Uh, he said in a statement in December, I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. Now, Cassie accused him in her lawsuit. Uh, she alleged years of sexual abuse, including rape. Uh, she said he forced her to have sex with male prostitutes while he filmed them. Another of his accusers was a woman who said the rap producer raped her two decades ago when she was 17. So these are very serious allegations. Diddy has maintained he did none of this. Uh, and so hopefully we'll be hearing from his representatives uh, in response to something like this today. I mean, he is um, as big of a deal as you get there in Hollywood, there in the music industry, there in the rap community as well. And so that's what I'm waiting for. But do you think, to your point and to the Associated Press here, they says, you know, we don't know if Combs is a target of this investigation. Based on what we saw today, uh, you know, we don't want to speculate, but, but knowing that they raided two of his residences, is it hard to say that he might not be swept up in this 
investigation in some form or in some capacity. I don't know what that's going to look like. I don't know if it's going to be an indictment or charges against him. But the very fact they, they raided two of his mansions on separate sides of the country, that's a pretty good indication he's going to be involved in this in some capacity. Yeah, I mean, he's he's definitely involved in some capacity, but it's also just a good reminder that there's just so much we we don't know. And, you know, kudos to the Associated Press, where I still uh, always admire their, the lines that they include in any story about how so-and-so's lawyer, you know, we don't know if so-and-so has a lawyer. That's a standard line you see in Associated Press press article because they strive to be fair and I think that's a good reminder that all of this is just speculation right now we we don't know we don't know what this is and he has not been charged with a crime however if you just look at what's been going on all the background the the civil allegations against him I mean something it, it, it's obviously connected to what we've been hearing it's just a matter of you know what it is and why I will yeah. say I I the, the feds do like to operate under the element of surprise. So I think everything that's been going on with this latest lawsuit that was filed against him by Little Rod and uh, Diddy had hired uh, Sean Hawley, who's a well-known criminal defense attorney in L.A., and he'd hired uh, an attorney in uh, New York, uh, uh, Bobby. Uh, she, she actually used to defend uh, Jelaine Maxwell. So he'd definitely been hiring some people with uh, criminal defense experience, but I think he was really gearing up for you know a big fight and also a big publicity fight. But I I do think that this would kind of take knock the wind out of anybody for sure. at least a little bit because like i said i don't think they had any warning on this and the feds do like to operate under the element of surprise that's right and, and it does seem like kind of the floodgates have opened against diddy uh for whatever reason over the last several months here and to your point you know uh homeland security investigator you know they don't just show up uh, you know, in in the moment, they they plan these raids so exhaustively in the weeks and months prior. And I want to put this statement up. This is Diddy's team emailed me their statement. The good news for Diddy is that there is already a proposed class action for him from a guy who got his door kicked in during the during an LA public corruption investigation to DWP one. The key caveat for class membership is his surveillance cameras must have been disabled during the raid. Aaron Dwyer hasn't been involved in Diddy's civil cases, and his sudden presence as Diddy's lead lawyer, the guy who put his names on the statements, is an indication that Diddy's team understands that this is a big fucking deal. Uh, Dwyer is a L.A. federal defense guy. I think my Toronto Today interview best nails what's happening with Diddy. He is not charged with a crime, and the feds have no authority to restrict his movement. Their only authority to contact his jet would be if they had a search warrant specifically targeting it. There is really zero info about this investigation in the news, but Diddy's team still complains about advanced coordinated media presence, apparently based on the fact that TV news crews learned about a gigantic raid on a celebrity's mansion and decided to report it. Yeah, dude, if you have fucking military gear in Homeby Hills, one of the most expensive real estate markets in Los Angeles, perhaps the world... Yeah, right in 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 a celebrity mega mansion, because like when you do a fucking military raid in the home uh, in the Homeby Hills, you're blocking access to like famous people. You're blocking access to like the the Hadids going uh, home. You know what I mean? Like the Hadid family lives there. The fucking Kardashians that used to live there. You know what I mean? Like that's gonna be news. It's going to be in the fucking news, all right? It's it's a big deal. I saw shots of Ridley Scott. Yeah, that's there you go. Ridley Scott got stuck and couldn't get home. Yeah, the Piker family lives there. Jesus Christ, the New York Times is doing this again. Israeli hostage says she was sexually assaulted and tortured. I mean, I don't think that's a that's a fake news. Hassan is a buy. Uh that is like the most credible reporting on uh, a direct sexual assault from a, a victim that was a hostage. So uh, I wouldn't discount that as like the New York Times actually doing it again. That one is like, uh, I read uh, pieces of that one. That one is definitely different than the other instances. That is most likely the reason why the UN report said that there was at least some instances of like firsthand uh, uh, evidence on sexual assault 
uh, that occurred with hostages. If you remember, they basically categorized that as a separate, um, like they gave that a higher, uh, they gave that a, a like a higher level of credibility for um, uh, sexual assaults happening uh, rather than October 7. So, yeah, it is, it is, of course, it is, of course, yet another uh, testament to how badly New York Times fucked up on their October 7 coverage that, like, um, that, that, you know, credible accusations of sexual assault coming from a direct personal testimony, uh, it, you know, it gets discounted. But didn't the New York Times interview people for their original sexual assault story? No, they, they, this was a hostage that was uh, released. The New York Times story came before, I think, her release, or they did not, they did not uh, personally interview this person. Did you see the New York Times article saying that the video from Kibbutz Be'eri cast big doubts on one of the allegations they use in the Screams Without Words article? Yeah. The Screams Without Words article is, is dog shit. Like, especially because they claimed systematic rape uh, directed by Hamas. And it was almost utter, like, entirely discredited. Um, no, I'm moving on from PDD. I'm talking about something else. Um, I'm, I'm talking about... Can you tell me if the idea of hospital rape story was true or not? I don't know. <laughs> The New York Times claims she told them what it was, but agreed not to publish it. There's also the claim that she told the same story to some Israeli doctor shortly after her release. It is obvious that the Israeli regime has been maneuvering the story for a very long time. Okay, well, um, I, I'm not going to cover that today, though. Look, man, I'm honestly pretty conflicted on it. The truth will come out, and I agree we should maintain that any woman should get the benefit of the doubt when it comes to sexual assault until proven otherwise. Yes. Absolutely. I'm saying that this new... Story has, in my opinion, a higher level of credibility than anything else, than any other uh, accusations or allegations of mass systematic uh, uh, rapes that were conducted. Uh, and as far as the Al Shifa rapes, I don't know. I haven't looked into that. I've only heard claims. I haven't seen any uh I haven't seen any additional information on it. But yes, I have maintained this position from day 1 that there is of course always going to be uh the unfortunate the the very unfortunate <clears throat> circumstance that like there is a high likelihood that in in a, a time of conflict there's going to be criminal elements there are going to be bad people that are opportunists that are going to uh use this chaos to do horrifying additionally horrifying things but like i said i have to read into it a little bit more um, to talk about it because it's a very serious, uh, it's a very serious accusation. But from a cursory glance, what I have read on it is that this is different. There is a higher level, much higher, much more serious accusation made with a much more higher, uh, with a much higher level of credibility. <sighs> you can't believe anything that comes from the Israeli government. They don't get to be believed automatically because they lie so much. Yes, I, 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 I don't think that 
anyone can accuse me of believing the Israeli government unconditionally. Um, there's also a little bit 